This is Cole Hamilton with Hamilton Native Outpost and today we're going to share in this video about cool season grasses planted into a warm season grass monoculture and kind of what that looks like and how we're going to manage that over winter. So the field we're in is about a 30 year old stand of big blue stem. We've gone for seed production on it for 25, 27 years. A few years ago, we come into this monoculture big blue stem and we planted our cool season grasses in here, which consisted of early wild rye, Festuca paradoxa, and wedge grass. We planted those into the stand of warm season grass by grazing it really hard the year before we planted, during the growing season, and there's that kind of old rule that you get off your native grass one month before frost to let it kind of recharge. We ignored that rule and we grazed it right up till frost. By doing that, we tried to per se weaken the native grass a little bit to make room for the cool season seedlings to get started. Well managed native grass in the past is not gonna be weakened that much in one year, but it does supply a nice seed bed, a little bit more bare ground. So we get more bare ground after we get out grazing it, we came in here and burned it over winter. After we burned it over winter, we seeded in the dormant season before February, the wedge grass, wild rye, and festuca paradoxa. Then it's went through one growing season. Uh, we're now on the second year growing season. So what we wanna show you is the green mixed in with the brown. So the brown you can see around me, the taller brown, there's a few green leaves in it that haven't quite got dormant. We've had a first frost here in the middle of October, but there's still a little greenery in the big blue, but it's starting to go dormant. It's gonna all be orange and brown here in just a few more weeks. But when you look down at the ground, you can see these specks of green around. And what the, the mash down kind of pattern we have, these are tire tracks from where we did some seed harvest with the tractor. So you see mash down and then we have bison in here, been about 85 head of bison in here for about four days on 17 acres. Um, very light grays, just wanted to open the canopy up. They walked a lot on the tractor tracks, but in between the tractor tracks, we kind of got this, crisscross pattern of knockdown grass, grazed grass, allowing sunlight down to these cool seasons. The cool seasons are just waking up. There's not a lot of growth going on, but as the warm seasons start to quit taking the sunshine, that's what triggers the cool seasons with the cooler temperatures, the fall rains, they start to come on and grow. So we've got this kind of, this random pattern of growth and sunshine and growth and sunshine of the warm seasons. This is going to be the stockpile grass. The warm seasons will have nutrients enough to sustain, say a dry cow, barely. But with the addition of a little bit of cool season that she can bite off, she will not only sustain, but actually could gain weight over winter time in the way we're gonna utilize this grass. So the preparation of this graze right here was just to get the solar collector opened up for the, to set the stage for the cool season grass. Let's take a look at some of the cool season grasses here that are starting to wake up. So here there's kind of a taller clump where they haven't grazed next to some ash down where they have grazed. Let's try to look into this clump, see what's going on. So in here we've got an early wild rye that has uh, got quite a bit of growth on it actually, probably 10 inches tall, but it's kind of a spindly growth compared to what it's gonna be in just a few months. But that is just greening up. That actually went dormant all summer long and probably just greened up in the later part of August and started to grow again. So it's really coming on nice. Here around the base of it, we've got this finer grass. That'll be a wedge grass that is gonna, it's at the end of its first year. So it's germinated this spring. It's really started to grow here with the fall rains, cooler temperatures. We'll make seed next year and die because it's a biannual. So this is its winter that it's gonna supply a lot of forage getting pulled out. There's so much wild rye and greenery, it's hard to find him. This long bladed grass is a festuca paradox. I can feel it's a little rough on my fingers. 
That is a festuca, same thing, very spindly, not much there to eat. That plant probably had four or five leaves like this on it, but it's a little bit of this green mixed with a little bit of this brown that makes this an effective forage for wintering, wintering cattle over. It's not a big a ration that you would try to use for stalkers at this point, but keep in mind this would be more than adequate for your cattle all winter long that are, say, dry, but bred back. So as you look at this green and this brown, the brown's gonna be our stockpile, like I said. The green's gonna be the quality supplement, and that cow cannot eat that green out of this clump without taking in some of this brown. And she really won't even want to. She'll wanna balance her diet with some of this dry, dry grass to kinda, you know, negate some of that protein overload. Um, this is not what you would want for finishing stalkers on per se at this point, but this is a very good maintenance ration for stalkers or a bread cow. This is probably even quality enough for a bread cow that is lactating a little. Um, but keep in mind, our goal here, we're just setting the stage for what we're gonna do in the later parts of the year, which is gonna be able, to, we're gonna graze this multiple times. And I want to challenge the thought we think a winter stockpile, you grow it in the fall and then you get to graze it once over winter. I'm going to challenge the thought that this warm season grass is what we call the stockpile. This cool season grass that we're going to supplement it with is not a stockpile. We are not trying to grow this to graze this one time over winter. Uh, depending on the weather and how cold it gets for one, uh, how long the ground is frozen for, but also how much rain and moisture we get. I would anticipate we're going to graze this, this green growing plant multiple times, possibly as many as three times between now and spring. So that is kind of what we're doing here in this field. That's kind of the plan we're making of how we're gonna winter our livestock. I'd also like to point out that this growth you see here, the warm season and the cool season grass, this is no fertilizer. This field has not had any fertilizer put on it in the whole 30 years it's been in Big Blue Stem. We didn't use any fertilizer to get this started. We just simply used the right plants in the right place. So part of the not needing fertilizer is it's a cycling of nutrients. Basically, if you aren't growing something green on the ground on any given day, you are losing nutrients out of that system. You're either oxidizing them or the rain is taking them deeper down into the ground. It's really important to keep a variety of plants going and that's part of how we get by without adding fertilizer to our system. We're just simply keeping the fertility we have in our system rotating from one plant to the next. So we're here on December 5th back in that big blue stem field that has cool season diversity added to it. Um, again, we're in, we're in stage one drought here, so we haven't had much rainfall, but our growth is actually coming along quite nice. It's been about a month, month and a half since we shot our last video. So we're wanting to show you the growth that we have here and kind of what it looks like. Um, so what we've got is, you still got your big blue stem. It's still standing fairly well. That's gonna be the dry matter for the, the cattle or bison, whichever we graze this with. Uh, and then we've got this regrowth coming on in here. This is a wild rye, uh, probably an early wild rye. And here's another one. And we're looking at down in the ground, or if I pull the grass back here way down to the ground, you're looking at eight inches of regrowth on that one. Now, if you look just at this sample, there is quite a bit of brown around here. And a lot of this brown is laid down, but it's actually up off the ground and it's still dry and it still will have nutrients in it, almost adequate enough for a dry cow. But you take this little clump of green and this little bit of green, and oh yeah, if you look through this thick brown stuff and you spread it apart, there's actually quite a bit of green down in there. And the cattle will know that. And they'll rummage around and they're gonna eat this and they're gonna take that in their mouth and they're gonna wind up with something that looks like that. Quite a bit of brown, a little bit of green. A little bit of green this time of year goes a very long way for your livestock to balance their diet with this brown. Barely adequate, really nutritious. 
So a mixture of those two is what gets our, gets our cattle and our bison through winter. Now there's a few things that we tried to do and watch. This year we've actually left our calves on our cows because it is a little dry. So it's easier to take a few pounds off of the cows to keep that calf growing nicely. We can put that right back on in the spring. If it wasn't as dry and we had a lot of regrowth in our pastures coming on behind our grays, we would probably wean those calves and run them on that regrowth while we used our cows to keep taking the brown and the green down. And then when the brown's kind of gone, we'd run our calves along behind. But this year we're not getting much regrowth with this drought we're having. So we're trying a different approach and we're running the cows on the calf. The cow is more efficient at turning this little bit of green and this brown into uh, nutrients that both them and the calf can use. The calf gets it through the milk. The calf also will go out and forage and do its thing. Um, and so it kind of keeps us growing along. With doing that, we're keeping a pretty close eye on our cow condition because if we start to take that too far, then we'll wind up needing to wean those calves or we'll pull our cows down too, too low and then we'll have calving trouble in the spring. We can't flush them up that much before they calve. Our cows will calve in April. We're back out here in uh, the big blue stem with wedge grass and rye and Festuca field. Uh, it's mid-January here now and we're we're just back out here looking at the growth of the festuca and the wedge grass and how well our big blue is stockpiling so we've got a little snow here on the ground making it a little hard to see things today uh, we did finally get some rain about two weeks ago and so things really started growing uh, with the rye and that is well protected we're we're lush green we're growing good uh the rye that's not as well protected from the weather it's starting to yellow a little bit i don't see any here we'll look around but uh it, the leaves ends will actually turn purple on rye doesn't seem to affect how well the livestock eat them so but we're growing quite a bit and we're actually tillering quite a few new leaves out of the cool season grass. So not only has the height of the grass improved, the tonnage of the overall fields improved quite a bit from where there was three leaves, four leaves, now there's six or seven leaves. So this would be a good time to come in here and graze it. Uh, we aren't going to graze this field for a while yet. It'll be more up towards spring. But anyways, it's a good sample of how you can have some warm season grass stockpile left sticking up that's easy for the animals to get to and you can have some quality regrowth grass down underneath as you look around here in the snow it looks like there's really not much but when I kick that off of the of the plants and vegetation that's there you've got quite a bit of green mixed in down in there and that's really what you're looking for there's some that's protected a little bit more by this big blue there's some more protected stuff down underneath there and you know that's easy for a cow to get her a mouthful of that that's not a problem and she'll eat that she'll eat a little bit of brown it'll go pretty good the big blue it is one of the wor worst uh, big warm seasons to lay down over winter and we're getting to that time where that's starting to happen this is kind of a thicker clump that stayed up pretty good so far this winter and if we kind of you know looking at it you see a lot of brown with a little green sticking up through it but as i kick that snow off and i start to work that trash back and forth that big blue breaks up and it always amazes me just how these natives how the system's made to work for the native grasses to just grow right out of a clump of that you've got 18 inches of growth that you could hardly see that's right down there in that and there's no way for a cow to eat that without getting a little bit of brown they just can't hardly be that selective now your sheep and goats they'll kind of pick at it more but a cow she's got to eat a little brown if she's going to eat that green and that's part of nature's design we've got a whole lot of tonnage and a little bit of quality and it makes it all work out we grazed through this once. This is the regrowth that's come back on it. We knocked a lot of the big blue down at that time. Uh, so I'd say half or more of your big blue has went down here by mid-January. If we get a heavy snow or particularly ice, we'll lose quite a bit more of that going down. But other than that, we're just kind of growing cool season grass here is what we're doing. And this has been Cole Hamilton with Hamilton Native Outpost. Uh, we really enjoy showing you this kind of stuff and sharing it with you. If you like what you're seeing, check out our videos on Facebook and YouTube.